got the truck loaded and I'm heading out from north of Little Rock, Arkansas and we're going to head to Monticello, Mississippi to meet up with my uncle who is uh, the one I told you about in the previous video. He's traveling by horse-drawn wagon and he's crossing the country to pray for our nation and we're going to go down there and film another video and spend a few days with him and when I get back down there we'll uh when I get down there, I'll check back with you then. Hello, everyone. I caught up with my uncle down in Monticello, Mississippi. Uh, so far, he left out from Wilton, Arkansas, and he's traveled approximately 400 miles. And we're going to go about 11 miles up the road today. So we're going to get started, and I'm going to take you on tour where we're at right now. And he found this little road that's kind of... Uh, this is highway, old highway 84, and this is where the highway used to run. It dead ends up at the top. So, we got up early this morning. He's getting getting the horses ready and the wagon hitched, and uh, we'll get ready to get on the road here shortly. I'll take you walking around camp. This is where we stayed last night. Actually, he's been here for two nights and I spent last night in the back of my truck. And when we get to where we're going, I'll show you kind of our, our camp setup and how we how we spend our evenings. And I will check back in again with you shortly. Getting things ready on the inside. <laughs> This is State Mississippi Highway 84, and we're between Monticello and Prentice, Mississippi. And soft. <laughs> we'll see y'all at the wall. All right, All right God bless y'all. Right, we're riding on the prayer wagon. It's him folding. Hello, everybody. Glad y'all can join us this morning. We're praising God and making tracks. Y'all come along with us. We're heading 16 miles up the road to a store outside of Collins, Mississippi. That'll be our next save for the night. We're going up Highway 84, Mississippi Highway 84. Getting there today, but I guess we'll make it. Yep. We're supposed to leave at 9 a.m. and we didn't get out till 11. So, but we got all day to get there. Got some hills. Today's supposed to get up near 80 degrees. So, uh, it's gonna be kind of warm when it happens. Yeah, it's gonna be a little warm. But who can be against us if God's for us? That's right. Make some good people, don't we? we do. Yeah, we just left some good folks back there. Uh, brought us some water for the horses. 
uh, went to, took us to the store to get some parts and uh, they've really taken care of us. That's, he said that was an old abandoned uh, cell phone oh, really? factory or something. And he said that one across over there, uh, he said it was, they made tiny homes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. Like yeah but they, they said they went out of business. Doing the Lord's work. Yeah. <laughs> There's his brake system. Going down this little hill, I had to, when the trace chain gets blue, I had to fly those brakes. Keep it off. Of See, I'm getting slack in them and bouncing. Little brake on. Goes right back. Go right back. Yep. <laughs> This is Lawman coming at you from uh, an abandoned house on Mississippi Highway 84, waiting on the prayer wagon to pass by, which he will be here in just a minute. And we're about three or four miles from our destination for tonight. It's a creepy old house. But here comes the prayer wagon. There goes the prayer wagon. <laughs> Are we still going? Yep. Hello, everybody. Taking a little break. Look, the horses are sweating. We need uh, preacher Rodney to say a prayer. <laughs> this is our camp for tonight. A little spot on the side of the road. And once we get camp set up, I'll kind of show you our, our situation, how we're how we set up and everything. These nice people at this store letting us stay on their property. Hello everyone, welcome uh, to camp. I just want to give y'all kind of a look at what we've been, uh, our camp set up at nighttime. This is my truck. My wife had cut out some privacy panels for me to put in the windows. Uh, and I bought a air mattress. There you got one that goes on the bottom down there that jacks it up and then the mattress for the top anyway this has been my my home away from home for the past week it's a little cramped but it works you just have to move stuff around from the front seat to the back and now i'll show you uh uncle tim's setup in his in his wagon here's the prayer wagon i'm gonna take you on board so you can see his his sleeping arrangements it's set up all right hello everybody come on in 
Show us, take us on the tour, show us around. All right, here we go, my little humble home I'm living in. It's small, but uh, it's cozy. There's a door going to the driving area. Here's my bed. Uh, here's one thing I really want to show y'all. My blessed little old church has made me a prayer quilt. And everybody has signed it, anointed it with oil, prayed over it, and sent it to me. I'm proud of it, and I, I also have a church sponsoring me tomorrow. They're supposed to be bringing me another anointed quilt all the way from Fort Smith, Arkansas. They'll be here about 4 o'clock tomorrow, and then I'll have me two prayer quilts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put them both on this bed. <laughs> Get them warm. <laughs> I'll stay plenty warm. This is, uh, this is my hanging where I put my church clothes, and then they go up under the storage under here. Uh, it, it, I got a row right here hanging that my church clothes and then my other bags and stuff is under here. Then I got my little sink, my dishwasher stuff in here, my little hot water heater, my cook stove, and this is a little storage that I set my TV on right here. And then I got my little buddy heater. Back behind you is my shower. I keep it stored full of stuff too. Uh, little fan, lights, everything works off a 12 volt system. Uh, Solar panels on top, it charges everything. So, uh, Timbo put me a little couple of little snaps on here to hold these things shut while I'm going down the road so stuff don't fall out of my cabinets. Uh, my little mirror, my sister got me here so I can kind of wash up and comb my hair and stuff in. It all works pretty good. Uh, this is uh, Tiffany and Marcy Altenbomber, our cousin. This is my little grandson, he's four year old, Tucker Hinton. And this is Tiffany and Tucker. I don't have one of Timothy and Julie. I wish I did. I need another one of them there, but I don't have it. Uh, this is my little thing here where I charge my telephone right up here. This is where I keep my real stuff at. Here's my Bible. That's my using Bible. It looks a little rough, but... Uh, that, is, that is mean just used. <laughs> that's, the one, that's the one that I use, and I keep some notes in it. But I do have another one right here. It's uh, brand new. My daughter bought me for this trip. And uh, this is a new one. But this is the one I, I carry to church with me because it's all nice and new and in the box. <laughs> but it's pretty. <laughs> but I use the other one most of the time. And I keep all my stuff right up here. I tell you what I got right here. This really right here means a lot to me. This is my prayer closet that my friend sent to my church and uh she anointed her church anointed it with oil and they sent it to my church to take care on this journey with me and i got it right here and uh it's in this little envelope i carry it on me with me so i got my prayer cloth with me so i keep it with me and it's all my papers uh and stuff in my charging system that i got with me So I keep all the good stuff in there. And this is the back side of the wagon. Shower over here in this area here. As he said, the sink, hot water heater stove. And you keep going and that goes to the back porch. I hope you can see it. But... Hello everyone, I'm here with my Uncle Tim Ford with the prayer wagon. Uh, we're out here near um, Collins, Mississippi. And right now he's headed to the East Coast. He left out December the 28th from uh, north of Texas County, Arkansas, going a little over 400 miles. And still going, still going strong. And we just thought we'd sit down and kind of tell you about the foundation of all how all this got started. And what he's doing, he's traveling the nation, uh, praying for our country. So, and he's had his vision for 20 years. And but, like I said, we're getting ready. He's going to tell you the foundation of all of this. So, Tim, go ahead. Hello, everybody. I'm glad y'all following along with us. I, I appreciate my nephew coming out and doing this for me because it's. Uh, we're not doing it for us or any glory for us. We're going to give all the glory to God. Jesus come into our lives in a long time and we kind of look for things that we can do. It's little things. We uh, 
which he could preach, but I can't. I, I'm just a prayer warrior. And I got that from my mom. Uh, I remember when I was a, a, a teenage boy, and I mean, she had seven children, five boys and two girls. That's the way it was. So me being out of school, I'd come in. You know how kids are when they come in. They always want to eat, you know, and they'd come in. and Come in the house, they'd go to holler for mom, so she'd fix them something to eat, especially us old boys, you know. <laughs> so uh, I'd holler, Mom, where are you at? She said, I'm in here praying. She said, uh, won't you come on in here and pray with me? And I'd always come up with some kind of excuse, you know, you know how boys are. So I'd always tell her, nah, I can't right now. I'll, I'll may later, you know. She drug us to church when we was children until we got old enough we couldn't go, you know. And we wouldn't go, rather. Uh, so I remember that. But as I got older, only one of us boys, I think, has, had got saved before she passed away. So the rest of us never did get to it. And I was one of them. And, uh... We never got to go to church with her as we got grown, and that's what she always wanted. She wanted one of the boys to be a, a preacher, you know, and none of us ever did. None of us ever made it. But I've seen the boys come to the glory of God after she passed. And I've seen where her prayers have been answered years, years after she passed away. Uh, God is still honoring her. He still honored her prayers even though he's answering them. And she's done gone on to the glory land. But uh, she, her prayers are still just like she's prayed them. They're still coming true. They're still being answered. She prayed for her grandchildren that she didn't even have yet. So I'm doing the same thing. She taught me, or she didn't teach me, but I remember watching her do this all of my life. And I know it had to be over a thousand times that I come in over over my lifespan, and she would always be in there praying. When we all got together, we gathered at the kitchen table, and there was always a Bible on it. If you remember, I remember. Yeah. Uh, I looked at her Bibles, and she's got notes in it. So that gave me the idea to I write notes to my children, you know, in my Bible and 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 stuff like that. But I pray for my grandkids that I don't even have yet. I only have one grandson, it's Tucker Hinton, and he's four years old, and uh, he'll be five in uh, in November. So uh, I pray for him, and I pray for his his uh, his cousins, which he don't even have yet. Uh, I pray for my grandkids, and if they come, I'll be tickled to death. If they don't, then, you know, you know how it goes. But I'm praying. I learned to pray then, and I hope my prayers get answered in my and my kids will, uh, will reap from the prayers that I'm praying now. Even my grandkids, the one that I have and the ones that I don't have yet, will get to reap from the prayers that I pray now. So I kind of, mom kind of taught me how to pray. She passed away in uh, 1984. So uh, if her prayers can be answered from then till now, so I'm going to extend that on i'm gonna pray now if it'll go 30 or 40 years and then get answered well that's god's gonna do that so i decided that prayer is one of the most important things other than your salvation uh i mean if if i'm not mistaken you can't even get salvation without praying forgiveness that god will come into your life so it's all got to start with prayer and then faith so that's kind of what we're doing. We got faith in our prayer that we pray. So I'm just traveling. I come up with this idea. I love horses and I love camping. But I love God first. So he's kind of brought all of this together in unity. And that got me thinking. Man, if I could just camp and go with horses and get people in unity that will pray with me and get the United States held up in prayer God has got to answer that. Jesus come into this world as flesh so he can live and see. And he set an example of us how to live and to go on to glory. So if we do what he says, read our Bible, learn about him, and just do what he says and have faith that he will still answer prayers, uh, uh, then what I'm doing will not go as naught. And it's nothing for me because I don't want any glory. All I want to do is lift up the United States in prayer. God will honor that. we got a great country. 
and we've got a government system that's that's doing fine they're doing a good job but it needs a little tweaking it's got to be tweaked and and us all we can do is vote and it and sometimes you know the votes goes one way and it goes the other way and some things it's not quite as good as what we think it should be but if we'll lift them up and honor them with prayer then god will hear our prayers just like the scripture says we repent seek his face he will hear from heaven forgive us our sins and heal our land and i really believe that so i thought about i was going to travel in every small town that i come in i start praying for that city I pray for the city halls. I pray for the schools. I stop by churches as much as I can on weekends, and I go to churches, and it don't matter the uh, the denomination or anything like that. As long as they teach, teach Jesus and you and him crucified, then I'm good for it and give him the glory for it. So all of the churches that I've stopped and talked to, the people have been so great. They've been so wonderful to me. And they're sponsoring me in prayer. And man, they're coming together in unity and praying for our United States. They pray for me, and they pray for my horses. I have little children come up to me like 12, 10, 12, 14 years old that wants to come pray for me and my horses. That's an honor for me, because I know the prayers will be answered. I know that if you, if you pray, God's going to honor them prayers. Now, he may tell you no, or he may tell you let's wait a while. But either way, your prayer's going to get answered. He's going to hear them. He's going to hear everybody's prayers. And when we come together in unity over one subject, he's going to honor that, boy. He's a, I mean, unity is one of the things that we need most of all to honor God with and as our country, our unity, and our world. Uh, he cannot deny himself he will never go against himself on what the word has he's got he'll honor us with what and you can change his mind now if he's set in a way for a pattern to go and you talk to him and enough unity you can change his mind and prolong stuff or even change he'll even change his mind but you have to first clean your temple honor yourself and and be humble bow before him because he's a god of greatness he will listen. He will honor your prayers. And that's all I'm doing is over here is trying to get the churches, the schools, the police departments, the city halls, and Christian leadership, and let everybody come together in unity in our great country. I believe if they do that, he's got to, he's got to answer it, and, and he'll make our country great. Uh, it, it's great right now, but with him in it and running it like our founders started it, under one nation, under God. Oh, he's going to honor that. He's going to do it. And, and I asked y'all, y'all join with us in prayer. I, I pray today, twice a day for our country, the United States, and pray for all our cities and churches and just everybody you meet. I usually stop by, uh, stop, take an hour lunch when I'm traveling. And uh, usually somebody will stop and, and we'll visit a while and, and we may pray. I may pray for them or they may pray for me. Uh, but we humble ourselves and come together in unity and I believe God is going to honor that all the way and I owe all of this to my little old mother she had a rough life she only had a 5th grade education she could only read she could read not big words but she could read and write and all of that stuff dad never could he could read his name and write his name and that was it but mom had a fifth grade education and she read the Bible, that's what she read. She always kept her Bible on the table and so when she sat down there to rest, she would read that Bible. And, uh, or she sat in the living room and she would read the Bible. But when us boys was gone, you know, us boys got big enough to where she couldn't really control us anymore. So she prayed for us. And her prayers changed our lives. Uh, maybe not right then when we were young and teenagers, you know, we was kind of rough and rowdy and roundabout of ways, but uh, but her prayers softened all our hearts and it got God into us. Now, we may not have lived it then, but most of us come around after years and her prayers brought God into our lives. And, w and with that, we can make it. If you pray, believe, have faith, and... Uh, God is going to honor that. 
And if our country does the same thing, I've seen it in my life, so I really believe our country can do the same thing and get it honored. There's story after story in the Bible how pe people has humbled themselves and prayed and he has answered their prayers. He's fed them. You wouldn't believe the people that's coming to me on this journey in this full hundred mile. Every day or something, people stop by and they bring me horse feed. They bring me eggs. They bring me deer sausage. Uh, I go into convenience stores and they know who I am somehow. They've heard of the prayer wagon. And uh, they see me coming through and they see it. And I go in and try to buy food. They won't charge me anything. They just give it to me. And I try to tell them, I said, no, I paid for this. And they say, no, you're working for God. I said, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just traveling praying. I said, that's all I'm doing. But God has blessed me with great people that come in and take care of me. And it's just sometimes prayers... Uh, He'll even have guys just stop by and bring me hay before I ever run out. Before I get in need, he's having somebody stop by and take care of me. And it's not just been here. These people here are great. I, I, uh, and Collins and uh, 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 Chris, uh, Prentice. Prentice, yeah. The, and here in uh, all the way across Louisiana and Mississippi that I've come in. And it started in my hometown in Arkansas. Uh, people bless me, they drive by, they come out to the mailbox and they'll holler and wave as I go by and said, I'm praying with you. And how they know I'm coming by, I don't know. Uh, but they do. They, you'd be surprised that the people come. I had a lady just just the other day. And uh, she'd come out to the gate and wave, ho, 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 stop. And she knew I was coming. She knew who I was. And she stopped and we chatted, a, a real godly lady, man. She says, well, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it a different way. She said, I use a travel trailer, and I go places, places, and I tell them about Jesus. And I said, man, that's awesome. I said, me and you are doing the same thing. I'm just doing it with horses sent away. She said, I know, that's great. She said, God blesses me so much. So we changed stories a little bit, and then I went on about my way. But how she knew I was coming... She was a nice lady. Her name was Lillian. She was a black lady come out of the house and come out to the gate hollering for me to stop. So I stopped me chatting. And uh, a beautiful lady. Really nice boy, as nice as could be. But how she knew I was coming, I have no idea. But, but she stopped, come out there, and we chatted for about 10 minutes, and then I went on my way. But I think you give the, some of the credit to what's going on. People know about him is give the credit to his daughter, Tiffany. That's true. I'll tell you that, I was going to use my personal uh, Facebook page. And uh, so they'd been hearing, her her and my son and my daughter-in-law been hearing about this for years, and they didn't think I'd ever leave. But when it come time for me to leave, they come up. And, uh, you know, I mean, the day finally got there, I had to leave out. And it kind of broke their hearts, you know. But my daughter told me, she said, Dad, you got so many people that's wanting to follow you, you'll never do it on your own page. I said, well, hon, I don't know how to set up another one or nothing. So she set me up the prayer wagon to and forth. And uh, she videoed me leaving out of the driveway on December the 28th. So I left out. And, man, that thing has, has just went. And, and we've got uh, Rodney come did a video of us leaving over at Daniel's house. Daniel Hazel, we spent the night there. And uh, it got like five th over 5,000 views just of me coming out of his gate. And all I, all we did was put it on the prayer wagon 10 4 page. Uh, we, he come up, videoed me a few days, and we put that stuff on, the, on that page. And man, it's just people are just really enjoying it. So we decided to do this so we could thank those people. Uh, he said the next time he's come, he's did pictures of the trip, and he wants to go back, and everybody that lets me stay on the place or, or does something, I thank them as best I can, and I try to get them on that page, a picture of them, so everybody can see. There went a guy just honking at us and see went by the highway. But, he, uh, but these people are coming together helping us pray. They got such a love and a and a need for God to, to, to do the right thing. And the only way he can do that is we pray. He's gonna answer our prayers. And and I really believe it's gonna come around. But uh 
but after the life of me watching my mom pray and seeing her prayers being answered after she passed away, that was an honor for me. Uh, the times that she prayed for me and I got salvation out of it, it was awesome. It really was. Uh, but that's what got this whole thing started was, was the prayer part that she prayed for us boys and our children, grandchildren, her church. She prayed for her church every day. She did. So that's all I'm doing. I pray for every church I go by. And if I if I get to attend that church, I pray hard for everybody I meet in there. I pray that, that the Spirit of God will dwell with the members of that church. Because the members are the church. If he speaks to their heart and he puts love in that heart, it's going to come together as unity. That church is coming to unity to pray for me and my animals and my journey. That's unity. Well, when they do that, and God sees all of that, coming to pray for our country as a whole, as a unit, as you as unity, then man, he, he cannot do because the Bible, he, he says he'll be there. If two or three are gathered in his name, he'll be there as well. So if a country can get together in unity, he's going to be there. And it's going to be awesome. He's going to pour out his spirit on our nation. I can almost tell you from what I've seen when I left, the spirit of God moving through this countryside, I can see it coming about already. And that's why I say, y'all, please join with me and get in unity and let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our government, our schools, city halls, our police department. Uh, anybody that we can pray with in these cities, the cities are coming together. Just like uh, I went to uh, Farmersville, Louisiana over there. I stayed on the mayor's place over there. When I got ready to leave, I was going to sneak out the back and go down a back road. The mayor... Uh, talk to the chief of police. The chief of police come over where I was camped at before I could leave. He said, nah. He said, we got people waiting on you to come through town. You follow me. I said, really? He said, yes, you follow me through town. And that, it's the most awesomest thing I'd ever seen. You'd have thought Jesus Christ himself was coming through that town. There was people lined up on the sidewalks on both sides of Main Street down there as I followed the chief of police waving and all say I'm praying with you all the way through town most amazing this thing I've seen uh, I go into uh, I go into cities police officers city police state police county police they come up you going through town I said yeah I'm just traveling down here he said we're going to escort you and I said man thank you it's all I need and uh, man, people has been so good to me. It's been all churches has come around. They feed me. Uh, they they want me to attend their church and and let everybody see me and let me explain what I'm doing. And I'm not doing nothing but praying. It's God's spirit that's drawing the people together. It's His spirit, His love, and His spirit for our nation and for the longing for Him to want us to worship and to 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 do right. That's what he's after. He's after an uh, everyday relationship. And I think that's what we need to do. And he's going to honor it. And I want to thank everybody for, for uh, sponsoring me with prayer, for coming and watching these on YouTube and uh, the Prayer Wagon Facebook page, my own personal page. And the shares are, are phenomenal, boy, with people that I don't even know are sharing this. But we want to give God all the glory. Jesus come to save us. He sent his only son that, that we may have forgiveness and show us the way to make it to heaven. And it's working. If you just follow after Jesus, follow his direction and what he's done, all, I ain't going to say it's not going to be hard because it is. It's hard out here in the world. But I hate to try it without God. Man, uh, it's been so great and so awesome. When you depend on God, He's there for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be there. Now, it may not be easy, but he's going to be there for you. Anybody that's on addiction or something and has problems, man, go to a local pastor. Just go to a pastor you don't even know. Uh, get on my page. I can connect you with somebody that will pray with you. 
a hip you get off of uh, drugs, alcohol, or whatever it is, it don't matter. If you just need somebody to love you, get you a family church. They will lift you up and they will give you uh, divorces, whatever you need. Uh, churches usually do that. There's some of them that will, some of them that won't. There's different churches and different kind of attitudes in each one. But as long as they lift up Jesus, man, you've got a chance. You got a chance to make it. Just believe and have faith in Jesus Christ and what He did. God sent His Son for us, and that's why He sent Him to us. And it's a work. It's it's none of that is in vain. It's all great. Uh, I just wanted to tell y'all, thank y'all again for following me, for the support that I get through prayers. Uh, God is awesome, and I love all you guys, and I thank y'all for following me. God bless y'all. And, and I pray every day that God bless my supporters and bless the people that just look on my page and look on the prayer wagon page. And I, and again, I thank my nephew. He's doing an awesome job. This is his second time he's come down and videoed and done some things. And, uh, well, I also want to say, YouTube, too, it's been really great. Uh, Tiffany, his daughter, did the, the prayer wagon. And his son, Timothy, helped him build this wagon. Oh, yeah. so I want to give him credit too. Yes, I could not do it without him. He's worked on this thing so many hours you would not believe. We've worked on it up to midnight at times to get the thing ready. Uh, if we have a problem, we sometimes will have to quit and think uh, uh, think about things for a while. And he's always there to to help me because I could I couldn't do it without him. I've never built anything. This is the only thing that I've ever built in my life uh, from scratch. Uh, but I tell you right now, I couldn't have done it without it. Without the support of my daughter, uh, my son, and my daughter-in-law, and my brothers and sisters, my nephews and nieces, they've all supported me. And, uh, and I know they've all gotten tired of hearing me talk about it. For You know, I, I started out breeding these horses uh, 20 years ago, trying to get them right. And uh, then working on this wagon for probably uh, close to 10 years. Uh, but it's all come together for the glory of God. I, I don't, I don't need anything for myself but unity and God's blessing. God has blessed me so much, and uh, He blessed me with my children. They're great children. They haven't been no trouble. Uh, all of my family has really supported me in what I've done. My brothers, my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my sister-in-laws. I thank God for all of them, and I pray for them all the time. I really do, and I pray for you guys. And I thank y'all. Uh, just back to the foundation what we're talking about with, with Granny. Right. I we called you, her Granny. Her yeah. name was Helen Roberta Ford. Yeah. And uh, you said that she'd go in the bedroom and ask you to go in there and pray with her. Yeah. You wouldn't do it. But but now oh, are we you're doing good? it. But now you're doing it. You know? Right. And that's true. So you're following on. And something else we talked about, um, like I was probably I mean, I was 17 when she passed away. And uh, like you say, the prayer will not just her grandkids have, have uh, got into ministry, but she's got great grandkids. Oh yeah, that's true. So I mean, the legacy, her legacy continues. Continues on, it sure does. And so not that wouldn't be possible. This wouldn't be possible without without her. No. And that she was, a, she was definitely a praying woman. She I mean, was a she, godly woman. Yes. She lived. She lived. She what lived she it. Preached. She lived it. She sure uh, did. I've seen uh, I've seen men that work for us come in drunk, and before they leave, she'd have them down on the couch praying. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it several times. I've seen old friends of ours. We brought in guys, you know, we'd all be, be about half. We tried to hide it from her as much as we could, but you couldn't. You couldn't hide <laughs> nothing from her. Uh, She's going to tell you about Jesus. You stay around here very long. You're going to hear, you're going to hear the name Jesus because she's going to tell you. She'll give you every penny she had. Oh, every, she would. She would. Every some on the streets, and she'd take them in and yeah. wouldn't even have a dollar to her name after she got done. I finally, and, as I got older, I got to go to the church that she attended to, and they called her the lady with all the kids because she'd, <laughs> she'd go by houses and pick up kids and take them to church. Uh, she just had a little old kitty black mustang yep. you know, yeah uh, no air conditioner no she, heater she'd have it full of kids when she went to church yeah but anybody that a kid that she could talk into going to church now she's gonna take it. <laughs> and she was faithful with that yeah and it didn't make no difference who they were or what they were the color never mattered to her a bit 
uh, anything like that. She just loves kids and people. Anybody she could talk in the gold, uh, she take them. <laughs> yeah, she she love on anybody. Oh, yeah, she yeah, she yeah. She sold it me. I her, seen her, a man it. when she passed away. He was just a friend of the family, and he 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 drank a lot. He come down, and he sat down on the floor and cried like a baby when he found out she died. He come in one night and he said, Miss Ford, I'm drunk and I'm trying to go home and I need to sober up before I drive. He said, would you peel me an onion? So as she was telling him about Jesus, she peeled that onion. He ate that onion like an apple to get the heat off of it, to sober him up where he could make it home. She tried to get him to stay, but he, he had to go. But that onion sobered him enough up where he could drive because it was hot. With <laughs> but that's the way she was. But she told him about Jesus. Yeah. I remember that story. Yeah, she sure did. I was there when it happened. She did. She had a she had a rough life, but she never let that... Never let it cut her down. Cut her down. I mean, she was faithful to the end. She was. Yeah, she had a awesome legacy she left a legacy that none of us will ever be able to feel no. No. well sorry it's been so noisy we're, we're here on the side of highway uh, mississippi highway 84 it's pretty busy and then the wind blowing and then also we got a little road going right here behind camera so uh, sorry if you couldn't quite hear us hopefully this will turn out okay and I'm gonna have to leave tomorrow. He's up to him. He's gonna go on down the road. Uh, one thing that I, next time I will try to film more is the support that he gets. It's just when he headed out, it was just him, the wagon, the horses, and prayer, and that was gonna be it. Um, the first time I was with him, he was around where he worked, where he retired from, to retire, and a lot of his coworkers were around there. So I thought by now he's so far away. I said, well, he won't be so busy. And I mean, and, and he's not seeking people out. People are coming to him. So the Lord's bringing them to him. That's right. And he's uh, just amazed me. I've been here for a week now, and every day he's been busy. People have just come to him, helping him out, come and talk to him. Uh, pretty awesome. Now, I want to tell you a funny story about him. <laughs> Happened this week. Uh, gentleman in his 80s named Pete brought him some water. Had, how big was that water? 55 gallon, 55 plastic, gallon. plastic drum with a lid on it. So he had back of his truck and he was going to pour it into a <laughs> thing was, for the horses. He was 75. Oh, 75. 75 years old, yeah. So uh, he goes to a good man. pouring him with Uncle Tim and he, he said, he said, I can't hardly move it. He said, just give it to me. And so he started pouring <laughs> it by himself, about half of it out. Then, uh, and he sit there and Uncle Tim said, well, it's only half full, I'll get the rest. He still couldn't handle it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he said a five-year-old man showed him up, you know. Mr. So, Pete. Was, Mr. Pete, yeah. He was stout, boy. Pete <laughs> Ward was his name. And he's a, he's got a sawmill here just down the road a piece. And he is one strong fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Oldie but a goodie. Yep, this is gonna be it right here. All right, ready? Yep. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I
Jesus, we praise you as we live out today on the prayer wagon, Lord. We thank you, Almighty God, for the hands you kept up on us, O oh Lord God. And we give you the praise and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.